thy ways. Acknowledge God. In everything you do, acknowledge. Always know that you can succeed only if God is involved in it. Christian, before occultic people will do anything, they go to the occultic kingdom and make sacrifices and make inquiries. Don't you ever put your trust on a man. Don't you ever think that this year you will make it because your brother is now the governor. Don't you ever do that. I have told you, men, men fellowship, when we went to camp, I told you something in the camp. I said, from my own experience, I have gotten to know that all these people who are in political offices and they are in offices where they can make money, they don't like dealing with people who know them. People who have been close to them. Their family members. Their friends that they used to go to beer parlor and drink before. Once they reach that level, they don't want you to know the secret of their wealth. Amen. So if your brother is a governor, show me one person that the brother was a governor and he became his partner in anything like that. I lie. Lie, lie. I'm telling you now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have known them. I'm speaking from experience. I have friends that were governors during the military. My own very cosmates. Why you go to say they will fool you? Moses, you don't want to come and see me. Eh? You know, very soon I will leave this place. You don't want to come and see me. You will take off and go. You will enter motor with him, go around. You go chop with him for dining table. You go do anything. He say, oh boy, which business you want to give me now? He say, ah, wait now, wait now, wait now. You go and meet him. Even though you have just spoken to him on phone, you will still go and kneel down and pray. Papa, he phoned me now. Say, make I go. Father, go ahead of me. You are acknowledging God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. All, all, all thy ways. That is the reason why Christians, when you build a house before you move in there, you dedicate it. That's the reason why you buy a car before you start using it, you dedicate it. You are acknowledging God. Hallelujah. That is why after you have paid your dowry, before you take the woman to your house, you come to the altar. You are acknowledging him for that marriage. Don't make it the other way around. From the house, from the village there, you pay down if you reach, carry a call house. Now they chop every day, they chop, chop. Then small time, you say, eh, our wedding, which they will fix our wedding, huh, honey? Which they, which they will do this wedding now? Which wedding again? It's because you don't even know the meaning of wedding. On your way home, you pass through the altar. You have acknowledged him. Then the man of God makes that pronouncement. What God has joined together. Where does he join you? Because you have recognized him. Praise the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. Don't you ever think you are smart. You can do it. Don't say I am intelligent. Any maths they give me, I will write it, I will pass. Any exams I go, I will write it, I will pass. These days, it is not the best that receives the job. It is he whom God is behind that receives the job. Because everybody going there is going with one connection or the other. You, which connection do you have? You are leaning on your own understanding. It will fail. It will fail. It will fail. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Another way of leaning, I mean of putting God first, is in Exodus chapter 23. Putting God first. Exodus chapter 23. If you are there, I will read one verse. It's a law. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Can I go there now? Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading verse 19. The first of the first fruits. The first of the first fruits of thy land. Thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see it a kid in his mother's milk. So the emphasis there is the first fruits. See the way he put it. The first of the first fruits of thy land. The first of the first fruits of thy land. Listen, because this teaching has been messed up. Listen carefully. The first of the first fruits of thy land. They belong to God. You will bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 26. Hallelujah. Chapter 26. It's a law. Amen. And it shall be from verse 1. And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and possess it and dwellest therein. Listen. I read that verse again. Verse 1. Listen, listen. Because somebody, you are going to enter your land of possession. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe what I'm saying? See, after this program, the Lord is going to establish somebody permanently. Permanently. Here how he put it in verse 1. He says, And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and you possess it, and you dwell therein, verse 2, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the land of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee and shall put it in a basket and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And you can read it down up to verse 15 to get a picture. But because of time, let me explain. Go to Proverbs again, Proverbs chapter 3. Because that is where sometimes we, we miss it. Where I read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Church, listen. Listen. It is the first fruit of thine increase. So, if you do that, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presence shall burst out with new wine. There are churches that teach that the beginning of every year, the first money you make that year, your salary for that year, you take it as your first fruit for the year. And you bring it and drop it at the altar. Church, there is no teaching like that in the Bible. It is a misrepresentation and I believe it is a willful misinterpretation to make personal gain from the people. Why I say so is do you know the God we are serving? The whole salary for the month you carry them. Go give God. Where did you go chop that month? Amen. That is not the meaning of that statement. Hallelujah. Do I have time for this today? Church, listen. That is not the meaning. Of, that is not the meaning of that statement. He said, bring the first of 
your first fruit. What is your first fruit? First fruit has to do with the initial investment you are making. You have been unemployed all this while. And you suddenly get a job. Your first salary is your first fruit. You have been working all these years. I mean, unemployed all these years. Suddenly, your first job. See, in my place where we come from, and I expect every true child to do the same thing. Where we come from, once you have graduated, the first employment you have, that salary you receive, you will take out of that money and bring it, not all, a reasonable amount out of that money and bring it to your father to bless you. In my area, that is what we do. Bring it, if your father is not around, the most senior person in the family to go and tell him, I have now gotten a job and they have started salary. This is it. I have brought part of it to you. It is Part of it. Not all. That's why he said, the first of the first fruit. A part of the first fruit. You have to bring a part of the first fruit. Not total. A part of it. That investment that you made, the first in, in, in inflow, the first inflow that you receive. From that initial investment, the investment that you made, that business you entered into. After you do that, no more first fruit offering again concerning that business. Amen. Concerning that job, every year is not your new beginning in that work. If you change a job and you go to another job, you will do the same first fruit again in that new job. Get part of it. Amen. Get part of it. See? Ha, 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 ha. Can we open Bible? First fruit. That's why. Win from the breast. Old Testament makes us understand New Testament. New Testament makes us understand Old Testament. Don't just run away from from uh, 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 <laughs> don't just run away with one scripture from the New Testament from the Old Testament and run off with it. Balance it line upon line. Precept upon precept. Go to Leviticus chapter 23. Chapter 23. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some ordinances in that chapter. We have the Passover, the unleavened bread, the Pentecost. They are all feasts. And you know that every feast ordinance in the Old Testament was speaking of something in the new. Passover feasts. Amen. The Passover from Egypt to the promised land. And they passed through the Red Sea. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we pass over from death to life. The Passover feast. And they used a Passover lamb. Passover lamb. Hallelujah. And Christ is the Lamb of God that was slain for our Passover. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says so. He said, for even Christ, our Passover. Jesus Christ, our Passover. Through Jesus Christ, we pass over from death to life. From poverty to abundance. Hallelujah. <laughs> And so also with Pentecost. What is Pentecost? Pentecost 
was a feast. 49, observe 40, 49 uh, 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 Sabbaths, 49 times 7 is how many? I mean, uh, 7 7 times 7 is how many? 7 Sabbaths. The seventh Sabbath, amen. Praise the Lord. The day following the seventh Sabbath, the day following the seventh Sabbath in calculation, which will make it the 50th day, is a celebration called Pentecost. And it was speaking of something. What was it speaking of? Christ resurrected. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But before the resurrection, there is a feast that is before the Pentecost, I mean. Before Pentecost, there is a feast that is observed known as the feast of first fruits or called wave offering. Amen. That is what you see in Deuteronomy chapter, I mean sorry, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you become into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf, a sheaf, there, a little bundle, a handful, of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. A sheaf of the first fruit, that is, your harvest for that year, get a handful of it. Not all. A handful of it. Bring it to the priest because that is the temple where he placed his name. Amen. A sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. You wave it like this. Wave it. To be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. He will wave it when? The next day after the Sabbath. Sabbath is Saturday. On Sunday, he is to wave it. Hey, Jesus. Praise the Lord. After that feast, amen. The next, the next ordinance that follows feast is the feast of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Watch it. Christ Jesus, he died. Amen. When he resurrected, blessed be the name of the Lord. When he resurrected, hallelujah. How many days did he spend on earth? The Bible said he spent how many days? 40 days. 40 days he spent on the earth. On after the 40th day on the mount he took off. 10 days later oh blessed be the name of the Lord. They were gathered for the feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. They gathered for the feast of Pentecost and the feast of Pentecost is always celebrated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When is it always celebrated? Hallelujah. The next day after the Sabbath, as they gathered, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know how we'll explain this because it is taking me away from prosperity. But people should know what the first fruit is all about. Church, let me go straight to the point. Let me not go straight to that. Let me stay with prosperity. We have too many things to talk in this Bible. Let me stay with prosperity. Church, listen. Jesus Christ, when did he resurrect? In Matthew chapter 27, when he resurrected, hallelujah, the Bible says that the dead saints that were in the grave, they resurrected with him. Is that correct? Praise the Lord. That resurrection, the Bible referred to Jesus Christ as the first begotten from the dead. 
God came to earth to harvest his dead children. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God came down for a harvest. The first harvest from the dead was Christ Jesus himself. That's why 1 Corinthians 15 referred to him as the order of resurrection. He said Christ, the first fruits. He's the first because there are others too that will resurrect with him later, you and I. Part of that was speaking of that first fruit. That's why he's the first fruit. Church, let me end just by saying the first fruit is a part of your first income that you receive. Acknowledge him first. Acknowledge God in all your ways. Put him first. It is a law. He said, the first one that opened the matrix, yes, belong to him. Hallelujah. When he said belong to him, it's for you not to take him and go and dump him at the at the temple. No. You offer him to God. And anytime God needs him, Papa, Mama, don't disturb. But it's still your picking. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm saying so because so many of these teachings have been messed up. For instance, when it comes to tithe, I explained to you in the camp, there is a teaching that says, if you are owing tithe. How many percent do you, are you supposed to add when you want to pay? Eh? Not 10 percent. A fifth part is 20 percent. It's 20 percent. Go to Leviticus chapter 30. Chapter 27. Chapter 27. Chapter 27, sorry. Hallelujah. This is where they get it. Verse 13. Verse 13. The Leviticus chapter 27, verse 13. But if he will redeem at, I mean, if he will at all redeem it, that is the tithe, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation. The fifth part there is 20%. Now, verse, go to verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithe, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. I think that's the scripture. And so, they teach, I have read it in books, books of men of God that you have so much respect and regard for. I read it. Amen. But church, I am not better than them, but the grace of God gives me understanding of this Bible anytime I read it. So when you see me speaking, I speak authoritatively because I am not a copy-copy preacher. I preach from what he grants me understanding of. What does it mean to redeem? What they are saying, let me make it clear again. What they are saying is, if you are owing your tithe, January till June, you have not paid your tithe, you want to pay back now, that you must calculate it and add 20% to it and then bring it because you are owing. And when you hear them teaching, they teach it as if they are actually saying something. That is not the meaning. The word there, the key word there is redeem. What is the meaning of redeem? Redeem is to buy back something that was yours before. But you lost it. That's the meaning of redeem. Why is God redeeming us now? From the foundation of the world, we were his. 
But something happened that he lost us to Satan. That brought about the process of redeeming us back to him. But there is the price of redemption. He paid the price to redeem us. If you don't belong to him, you cannot be redeemed. So, first and foremost, it belonged to you. You lost it under any circumstance. Now, you want to have it back. The process of having it back is called redeem. The tithe you are paying, that scripture is referring to those who are paying tithe using objects, particularly animals. Maybe you have a particular breed of animal that you know is very fertile and produces and you will need the milk. You will need it to join to produce for you. Now you are forced to give it as part of your tithe according to the law. Now, but the law says if you want to keep that animal because you need it, you will come to the priest. They will find the market value of that goat. How much is it sold in the market? It is sold for 1,000 uh, uh, naira. 1,000 one naira. He said, the cost market price is 1,000 naira. He said, add 20% of 1,000 naira. That will give it what? 200 naira. The total cost will now become 1,200 naira. Give the priest 1,000 200 naira, now you can redeem the animal. That is the meaning of that verse. Praise the Lord. Not if you are owing. God himself says that he forbids us from lending out our money to usury. It's a law. If you are owing me, you must not pay me with interest. Is it God that you will owe and pay him with interest? Praise the Lord. All this confusion, it's not even confusion. They do it willingly because they know what they will gain by it. Anything in the scripture that these carnal preachers will use to make money for themselves, they will stand there and hook on it and deceive the people and collect money. And innocently, you are bringing and thinking that you are fulfilling Bible. Meanwhile, God has no part in what you are doing. Amen. You have not been paying your tithe. Church, listen. The principle is clear. If you don't pay your tithe, Satan will come and collect it. So, I have not been paying my tithe from January till now. Pastor, what should I do? Forget it. You have paid it. You have paid it. Something else has collected everything. God wants only 10%, but when he refuse to pay, Satan will come. Sometimes it's 90% he will collect. So don't bother. Don't bother to say, I am owing. So from January, I better make a pay my time from January. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. You have already paid. That's the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because, number one, God looks at you as a robber. You have robbed God. Why God takes tight so seriously is because he, God, in the Old Testament, he designed that a whole tribe will not have land. Their own will be, they will be eaten because they ordained them to walk at the temple. So he set aside a law for every Jew from the tithe you pay the tribe of Levi they will be feeding from the tithe. He said bring in all your tithe that there may be food, meat in my storehouse. Who are those that will eat it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Levites. So if you don't bring your tithe God is angry with you because you are starving a Levi. Three categories of people that he said they are to use the tithe to take care of. The first one, he said, the Levi, the stranger, the motherless or fatherless, the orphans, and the stranger. 
in your midst. That tithe is to be used to take care of them. So anytime you refuse to pay your tithe, you are looking for trouble from God because God designed certain people to be taken care of. The needs of the church will be taken care of from your tithe. That's why any pastor that comes and collects all the tithes to himself and say, Nahim believer, all the tithe must come to him. He's a robber, he's a thief. Praise the Lord. So many of us, the hammer of God is upon us and we don't know it because you don't pay your tithe. It's a commandment. So if you don't pay your tithe, you have sinned. Not paying your tithe is as sinful as committing fornication, as committing adultery. Sin is sin. So what are you supposed to do? Is to repent and begin to pay. Don't bother yourself and say, all the one I never paid this year, make I pay now. No, unless by the nature of your income, you decide that it is at the end of the year, you or a particular month, you put together to know how much you have made to pay your tithe. That's okay. If you keep faithfully keep it. But if not, as soon as you make that money, pay your tithe. As soon as you make that money, pay your tithe. Church, listen again. You don't pay your tithe from capital. Don't pay tithe from capital. Tithe is 10% of the increase. The emphasis is increase, profit. So, now listen. What is capital? What I mean is, if I need 1 million naira to start a business, I have calculated what I need is 1 million naira, and I come to ask you, my brother, my uncle, and you give me 1 million naira, I cannot pay tithe from it. Because it is capital. If you pay tight, it will not meet the need anymore. Do you understand? So what you do is, you will invest that one million, but the first, any profit you make from it, make sure you pay your tight from that profit. Praise the Lord. Now let me, let me balance it. Listen. Listen. But if you did not make such projection, you just stay and your brother noticed that you need to be established and calls you and say, come, take this two million naira and go and establish yourself something. That two million naira, you pay tight from it. Do you understand? It is an increase. It is not capital. You are the one now to decide what to do with it, with whatever else. The first thing is register that money with God. It was a gift from you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because so many confusion when it comes to tithe. Some of you have asked me before, what of those of us when they do our own daily, 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 because now as, as they sell, sometimes they take to buy the okra what we go use for night. So at the end of the day, I don't know as I, don't as I go take, I don't know as I go take, I don't know as I go take, 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 take. Church, when you are doing your business, always acknowledge that you are not alone doing that business. That business belongs to you and God. Therefore, and you are the managing director, you must operate a good accounting system. You must operate a good accounting system. So that you can tell God, now what I make with this, give or take. Give or take. Because you know, every item you sell, you put a mark off there. You bought okra at mile 12 for 3 naira. You didn't sell them 20 naira for Ijesha bus stop. So you know how much you added on top. So don't say, me, I don't know because me, I don't know, me, I don't know, me, I don't know. You know, you know, you know. If not, when the thing enter your capital, the thing they cry. Ah, this thing now, all my capital don't enter. The thing don't enter my capital. How you know say enter your capital? Praise the Lord. So don't be wiser than God. No man can cheat God. So that you can tell God, Lord, I have been faithful in my business. Lord, I have been diligent in my business. Why should my business fold up? Why should they drive me from this shop? Why should they do this? Why should they do this? Praise the Lord. 
Now I'm talking now. Some people are sleeping. Continue sleeping. Continue sleeping. No, no, say, now, now, now that demon, when they confuse you, then they make you sleep. Now so that you will not hear. Faith come here by hearing. Uh -huh. Hear it so that you will never have faith to operate the principle of God. Now where are they preach? If I say I have finished, the sleep will disappear. Piam. Okay, we shall continue tomorrow. I have finished. I have finished for today. For today, we shall continue tomorrow. For today is put God first. Put God first. Put God first. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put God first. Poor person. You were poor. Now you're supposed to practice this past anybody. That's why that widow of Zarephtha, Elisha, uh, was sent to him. Is it Elisha or Elijah? I think it's Elijah. Elijah, a servant of God, was sent to a poor woman in a time of famine. They did, God did not send him to a, a rich woman or a rich man's house that still had abundance. The last bit that woman had at home was the person that God said, go. People are not sensitive in the spirit to see God in action. Hallelujah. What did they do? He said, woman. Amen. Wait till you get for her because hungry was disturbing that prophet. He said, nothing now. Wait till you don't know what happened for land. Does this small powder here with all small oil? I want to go make uh, 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 masa. Who knows masa? Uh, what do they call that? The masa. My wife likes masa so much. Mm -hmm. There's somewhere in uh, in Jerry that she always go to buy Ma masa. I don't know how they call it. It's, it's, a, it's a northern delicacy. Eh? They use flour and just, you know, put it on one round, round pot. <laughs> round, round, round hole like that. Uh -huh. They call it masa. That's what that woman was going to make. Say little cake. And that the firewood that we even cook it, she didn't need too much of firewood. Just two sticks to tell you how small the flour was. He said just two sticks. You just bend, put fire there, go heat her up. Before the firewood, bomb finish. The cake don't finish. And after that, no more hope. See, there are situations you face like that. There are some offerings that you are asked to give that you know, if you give, you know you have no more hope anywhere. A young man was in my office on Sunday. I don't know if he's here today. Another sister, a sister too. During offering on Sunday, a sister came and said, the voice told her that she should take her handset. The only answer she has to make in contact is she drop it in the offering box. She dropped it. And she stood and was looking at me. Because she has said she's confused. I don't drop them. Okay, what am I going to use? Make call now. She shall not get to buy another phone. After service, I was in my office. A young man came and said that during the service, a voice spoke to her that he should empty all his pocket and put in the offering box. He said he offered, he, he emptied everything and put that he's on his way going out again. The voice spoke. Now this kind of young boys, when they walk out with the earphone, you know, some people, they know they use earphone again. Now one wire, when they connect, connect. You can see that they walk out like, uh, they're going to talk. When they talk, you can see whether they're not mad, not crazy, they're crazy. But you know, no say na wire, then they talk to. Now that kind of person, with the headphone, he said, the Lord said you should go and take that phone and give it to the pastor. He came and was telling me, I said, all that you had, you put for offering. He said, eh. so how are you going to go home? He said, I don't know. He said, God will provide. I said, you're going out now to start begging to go home. You are sure it's God that spoke to you. He said, he wanted to ignore. He said, the voice will warn him. I said, but I have phone. I don't need phone. He said, you should bring it to me. I collected it. I just knew that God is about to do something for that young man. I am spiritual enough. So I had to bring, I said, okay, don't bring. I said, take 1,000 naira, take for your transport. Take. <laughs> Make you at least reach home. Because he emptied everything. Praise the Lord. I am sure that young man, he looks like a student. Is he here today? 
I am sure there's something God wants to do with him. Where is he? Eh? You are the one. Eh? Have you found out why God said you should do it? Not yet. Not yet. When yes, it happens, please come and tell me. Okay, sir. Eh? I don't know where your phone is. I gave Jerry. <laughs> I don't know whether Jerry gave it to his wife. <laughs> eh? It's in the office. No, give you somebody to use it. That's somebody to use it. Amen. That's somebody to use it. Praise the Lord. I make it as a principle. And all of you ministers, when somebody dash you anything, before you dash it out, use it. Even if it's one day, if it's a cloth, use it. If it is shoe, use it. If it is not your size, it's a different thing. But if it's your size, if you can adjust it to your size, just wear it, use it before you give it out. There's a reason for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is how that woman of Zarephtha explained her condition to Elisha, Elijah. Elijah then, instead of saying, ah, this is wrong revelation. How can God send me to a woman that has no food to eat? I said I should come here that she will take care of me. He was more spiritual than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He was most... Eh, eh, another sermon is going on at the back here. Uh, 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 eh? You are catching me something. Eh, come now. Alpha, did the Lord say you should empty your pocket and give me? <laughs> I was telling uh, Daddy that what the pastor just said now is from above. Yes. Somebody give me something, I went and give it out. And that night, the Lord came and warned me that why did I give it out? I should have worn it. That's why when another man brought one heavy, big suit for Over, me. Oversized. <laughs> oversized. On Sunday, so the Lord said I should put it on like that. So I put it on and I came and said, that is how the person will be blessed. Yes. I, I have always known that. I've always known that. Praise the Lord. So, so that's why you see some kind of cloth where I go wear. Some of you want me to dress like one young boy. I got dressed like that. Come anywhere they go. Now you give me make a wear. <laughs> Amen. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. Not only us. Anybody that dashes you something, use it before you give it out. Make sure you use it before you give it out. There is a blessing that flows from your using it to that person. Praise the Lord. And finally, before I round up, Elijah told the man, the woman. Prepare that your last meal for me first. Put God first. Can you, can you do it? The way you smile. <laughs> your smile is a mischievous smile. You are saying that if not me, I'm not going to give her more. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. No, but it's a difficult thing. No, let's, let, let's be honest. Will you give in time of famine? The last thing in the house. But you know, in Luke chapter 4, the Lord Jesus Christ told those Pharisees, He said, There were other widows in Zarephtha, in Israel at that time. He said, But he, God, did not send Elijah to any other widow, but to that one as Zarephtha. Why? Because there are some people that once they know, they hear, it is thus said the Lord, they will do it. They will do it. Once they know, because when he said, do it for me first, he did not wait. He said, for this is thus said the Lord. If you do it, that your pot will never dry. Your oil will never cease. That your flower will never cease. Food will never cease in this house. And the woman obeyed. Went and prepared the food for God first. God first. Tell your neighbor God first. Tell your neighbor God first. See, any money you make, let me tell you something. Any money you make is a secret for prosperity. I'm telling you it's what I practice. Any money you make, before you go and do any monumental thing for yourself, the first money you make, big money you make, 
before you go and start buying land, start the construction in your village, go and buy one expensive car before you begin to announce to the whole world that you have arrived. Make sure you take part of that money and do something substantial for God. Register that your breakthrough first. I have done it. And it works. I don't give other people's example. I give only my own. The unfortunate thing is that anytime I give my own example of actions I have taken that have brought blessing upon me, after the service, come and see requests. Pastor, I need your assistance. Pastor, I need your help. Pastor, I am a fertile ground. Pastor, try me and see my God. So in me. Pastor, I am teaching you to give. What you are catching is how to beg or where to beg from. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give, I use my own example. The house of Stephanus was addicted to giving. I am also addicted to giving. Why? Because there is a blessing in it. God's provided way is what I am telling you now. Put God first. And why will you not put God first? Why will you put him last? It's funny. If you have a fear of God, every day it will be God first before you, before you do anything, God first. The fear of God. Secondly, the love of God. The love of God will make you think of him always and what you can do to make him happy. That's the truth. Anyway, we shall continue that teaching tomorrow. Many more. I've talked only two. I told you there are six. Praise the Lord.